Interactive, along with Matthew Thomas, I'm the man they call Meathead. Thank you for joining us tonight here at PWR Interactive. You know, Matthew, we're going to have to talk to the powers that be. We're interactive as often as we can be, not just on Thursday nights. So we try to be as interactive as possible. We hope to have a guest for you tonight as well. Matthew, how did you feel Impact was just going off the air right now? Just going off the air, the taste that it left in my mouth, uh, you figured you were going to get some type of main event mafia reveal. And honestly, when the camera panned up the ramp and we saw that it was Kurt Angle, I got to say, Meat had a little anticlimactic there with the finish. I thought so, too. Uh, I thought it was a given that Kurt Angle was going to be main event mafia. I thought that was the easiest. So if there's going to be any, any type of reveal, you know, like if I were to reveal that the Heat just went up one at the end of the third, I would, you know, uh, just put that out there right away. Uh, and, you know, again, the reveal of Kurt Angle being in the main event mafia, really anticlimactic, as you just said, and really not um, not too awe-inspiring. I got a bad feeling about Impact tonight. Granted, they did some business, and they got some things done, but you know what? They, um, eh, the show just, uh, again, we're not going to compare apples to pizzas. Okay, we're not going to compare Raw to Impact. But coming after what we just had on Monday night, you know, you kind of have that, that wrestling taste. You kind of have that, um, you know, anticipation, if you will, for the next wrestling show. And I felt Impact may have let us down a little bit, Matthew. Well, in somewhat, at least in the finish meathead, of a rerun, because basically our big go-off-the-air moment is Kurt Angle involved in a stable that he's already been involved in? So, you know, the finish, there were, there were high points in the, in the middle. There were things that I liked about the show. But, you know, the, the way it ended, the, the closing segment was just not, you saw the backstage segments of Sting, and you're still wondering where they're going with the whole resurgence of the main event mafia. And the finish with, with Angle coming out in, in the suit, you know, I guess that was the, the big thing. Kurt Angle, he's in the, the main event mafia suit now. Just uh, just not really that big go-home spot that really does get you get you amped up about next week. Amped up is the right uh, thing to say. Uh, definitely not amped up for uh, the main event mafia. You know, I get that they're bringing them on, and I get that they're going to bring on a family to take care of the family of the Aces and Eights. That part makes sense to me. It's the way that they delivered it. Again, this stage one of the delivery of Main Event Mafia, ugh. Right. Uh, and there were a lot of ugh moments tonight in Impact. Granted, not all of them, but uh, we're gonna we're not gonna do the normal rundown, blah blah. Previously, we're gonna we're just gonna talk about the highs and lows of Impact, and we're gonna try to uh, debate them as we will. Let me get to my next ugh moment, Matthew, and I know you got some feelings on this as well. The knockouts segment, I thought it was disgusting, Matthew. The amount of mic time that Brooke had out there in that environment as the you know the centerpiece of that was just not it, it was just not the right spot for her tonight. I did not think it went well at all. Uh, you know there were there were some big announcements made there. There were good things to come out of that segment. The first thing that I'll get to is the fact that the uh, the knockouts tag title I thought were a, a distant memory. I didn't know if we would ever have anything done with those two belts again. You know, the segment would start off with ODB and Eric Young coming out there leading the way for the uh, the big state of the knockouts address there. You know, that was a, I thought that was something good. We actually get these titles addressed and I guess they're uh, vacant now. So we had something done there, which hopefully going forward you're going to see those titles you know, a tournament or something to get a little bit of resurgence, uh, you know, with some different knockouts matches there and tag matches. So that was a good thing. And, of course, the announcement that we would eventually get uh, for the knockouts title match next week. And more important than that, the fact that we uh, are going to get Gail Kim and Taryn Terrell in a ladder match in a few upcoming weeks. I mean, that was the big, that was the big announcement I felt right there. And the way that Brooke built up to it, Honestly, there was no buildup. You know, that point was basically kind of mentioned off the cuff. It was kind of mentioned matter-of-factly, like Brooke really didn't – it wasn't in her in her dialect and the way that she was talking, her cadence. It wasn't built up like that was the major announcement. It was just – it was more of what we had in that segment, and it wasn't the big point. And then all of a sudden, that announcement's made, and, uh, oh, by the way, that's the end of my, my knockout's address. The flow to it, everything – 
about it. Honestly, like I said, I like what came out of it. There's some good things coming out of that to look forward to in the upcoming weeks. But the segment was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Poor television. Uh, matter of fact, uh, it wasn't just what you brought up there, Matthew. It was the fact that, you know, when they say they're bringing out all the divas, or excuse me, all the knockouts, you know, again, because I want to throw out to Twitter, uh, Mr. Sandman Lee also mentioned how cute is it that Brooke is a knock, you know, uh, addressing all the knockouts just days after Stephanie addressed all the divas. But what they really did to make themselves really look bad, how many people were in the ring? Was that the entire division? And do they have enough to do a knockouts tag team champion anyway? That would mean there'd have to be four separate people. The reason that they had EY doing that is because they needed people. It was terrible. And and Mickey James is the champion. Uh, it came down to Gail Kim having to say on Twitter why that match was announced. Brooke never announced why there was a match between those two. It's for a number one contendership. So, so many just points of that match just absolutely uh, flummoxed by uh, and flabbergasted with. Uh, you know, they have this, uh, they have this, you know, ability to put on great wrestling shows, and I thought that, I don't know if it's creative, if it's writing, if it's the uh, performer's delivery, but that, I, I honestly felt like I was watching day one of TNA, which apparently they're on their anniversary week. So, Matthew, that segment, brutal's not the word. The presentation was rough, and I think having Brooke, uh, Brooke is, you know, how she's been used with the Bully Ray angle, I, I really haven't had that moment with Brooke where I've just been cringing, but tonight was, tonight was that moment, and comparing it to, you know, the Stephanie segment, Stephanie came off this week, you know, as Stephanie, Stephanie McMahon, an authority figure, Brooke, honestly, in this role that she was given tonight, just looked uncomfortable. And using her as the person kind of steering that segment, I just didn't get the believability that that this was an authority figure of any way, shape, or form. She looked like she was she was out there, you know. Honestly, at times, you know, uh, looking down, reading lines, and it was just it was it was tough to get through. Yeah, I, I struggled a lot with that segment, and. Again, there's some segments I struggled with, like the main event mafia delivery. Even though Sting is entertaining, when you know Billy Ray's on the on the ramp and he's screaming and you know tapping out with Angle and Sting climbing up behind or in front of him with his face and rubbing his face on his face, that's funny stuff to me. I mean, I'm amused by that. But you know, the fact that we had that, we also had the Brooks segment and uh, just just the delivery of the eight men. Plus, Matthew, correct me if I'm wrong, and again, those of you watching on YouTube tonight, uh, chatting in the uh, chat section over there, correct me if I'm wrong. Why was it not addressed? Where the hell is Todd Kennelly? Did he get fired? Is he gone? We were back to a two-man announce team again tonight with no mention that I know of. You're supposed to uh, forget all about that, and I believe me, the last couple of weeks have been uh, Todd Kennelly free, if I'm not mistaken. Where's the announcement? I mean, what happened? You're supposed to. You're supposed to forget that. Oh, terrible, terrible. Uh, wrestling is what it is. Wrestling is something that we're supposed to buy into. It's supposed to be, um, you know, they set the reality for us, and then we're supposed to buy into that reality. Am I right, Matthew? Oh, absolutely. And just to echo your uh, your comments on Kenley there, talking about the parallels between uh, Stephanie and between Brooke. It's funny because we've recently gone back to a two-man announced team on SmackDown, too, with uh, Josh Matthews not in that fold. So we've got another parallel there, you know, three-man booth going a uh, two-man booth here all of a sudden. I'm having a hard time watching it uh, tonight. Uh, I did what – and again, folks, uh, this is a show. This is a night that TNA wasn't able to plan for, and they wouldn't have done anything to it anyway. But TNA is going up against Game 7 of the NBA Finals. So uh, – you know, that's nothing they were going to be able to plan for. They didn't know the series would go seven, but you got to put your best foot forward. And I thought they I thought they mailed it in. I really thought that the show got mailed in. And, um, you know, let's stop talking about the negative, all right? Let's talk about some of the positives. I really enjoyed the match between AJ and Samoa Joe. There was uh, one sloppy spot, I thought, where uh, Joe was about to go for that muscle uh, buster. And then uh, AJ kind of landed on him awkwardly. I don't know if it was meant to be that, but... It just looked awkward and uncomfortable, but boy, what an intense match. I thought it was a great match. Matthew? 
absolutely a couple of high points from this that I really did like. I like the fact that the announced team called out that he's got a different move set now, slightly since he's a heel. You know, it's not something. It's something you see typically that happens, but it's not something that you necessarily see the announced team draw a uh, you know make a point on. And they did that tonight. That he's got a little bit of a grittier style. So I like the fact that they you know called reference. They made a reference to that and they pointed that out. And also too, I like the I like the result. It seems like it's been a while since we've seen a uh, a match go to a time limit draw like that. And it's a nice change of pace with the uh, with the conclusion that we saw tonight that you don't typically see that uh, you know that, that makes you you know it's an outcome that you don't see every week and it I think honestly it makes for a better match sometimes when you got two guys going at it like that to a, a non decision. Yeah, and you know we get that opportunity when we have the Bound for Glory series because there are points given out to time limit draws. So I love the fact that you mentioned one minute. I love the fact that you mentioned thirty seconds and. You know, uh, I didn't see them ramping it up like we see a normally scripted, you know, Iron Man type match or a 60 minute match or, you know, where they say 10, 9, I, I, you know, where you see them kind of ramp trying to do false finishes. I just saw them continually working and continually just going at it. And at AJ, you know, even though you say heel, I say just, you know, tweener guy that, you know, is by himself. But uh, AJ went after Joe right after the bell and still went after him and gave him the dirty, gritty pot shot. This is really AJ's time. We talked about this over the last year since AJ lost that um, uh, match where he was not going to get a title shot for a year. This is the ramping up for AJ Styles. So he knows it, his character knows it, and he's going to deliver that on TV where AJ Styles is this desperado trying to get back to what he once knew, which is the ability to fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. Matthew? We saw the further evolution of that tonight, too. I want to go back to the promo that he cut prior to the match. We really got a little bit more of a look into that character without the focus being on, is he with aces and eights, or you know who's he siding with like we've seen in the past. We got a little bit more of an explanation tonight from AJ Styles, you know, stating the fact that he is, in fact, out for himself. So I like what I saw there. I think there is... As we discussed, definite potential there for a lot of people to get invested in you know this new AJ style. So I think if they keep playing that in the right direction, there is definitely momentum going through this series because that's the you know right now that's one of the the favorites right there based on the stipulation from last year not being able to go for a title match within the next year. I mean that's one of those guys that it would make sense storyline wise if they go that route. So. I think the more and more they can get the audience invested in that story and in that character, the better product you're going to have. Yeah, and you know, granted, he didn't get the win, nor did he get the loss tonight, but uh, a lot of people are going to be invested in following what AJ Styles does. And I'd love to see it flourish right before the points, you know, the final uh, spot before the points stop counting, you know, when they're done with their matches. <laughs> and I believe the stipulation last year, and they're going to continue that this year, is you have to wrestle each person at least once. And, uh, you know, it was kind of odd to have open fight night mixed into, you know, the uh, Bound for Glory series, but nice. A little awkward when they showed him in the back. You know, the guys are waiting. Uh, Aries is standing on his uh, resistance, you know, bands, and there's AJ in the corner pouting. Mm, I'm going to get it back. Mm. Why would he be standing back there if we already knew that was the main event? What, nobody's going to call him out. He already has a match. Why was Samoa Joe there? Nobody's calling him out. He already has a match. So kind of <laughs> odd. But I was happy to also see Jay Bradley get out there and get mic time. Well, you know, the, go back to the backstage segment there, Meathead. The reason they were all back there, uh, you didn't see it, but they were actually waiting in line to use the resistance bands. Oh, it's kind of like back in the day. I remember the NWO only had one arm brace and one cast. So there was always a member of the NWO, black and white, before they you know, fractioned off that was injured, and they always rotated it, just like they used to rotate the goatee when you turned heel. So if you turned heel, you had to put a goatee on. You know, if there's one thing that you know from professional wrestling, Meathead, is that the wrestling industry is all about sharing. And about love. And, and speaking of love, another thing that made me a little uncomfortable but I thought could have been a decent segment ended up being nothing at all. It's bullies saying, girl, I want you back. You know I love you. Don't listen to your daddy. You and me, we can get down. Brooke Hogan and Bully Ray, apparently uh, Bully's trying to hit them skins again, and uh, it's unbeknownst to Hulk Hogan. Yeah, he's quite the uh, quite the romantic, although I did have a little bit of a, of a plot hole there. Maybe I missed something, but... 
didn't we see her getting into a, a limo or at least a, a car driven by someone else? And apparently when Bully Ray had her on the telephone there, he was uh, trying to convince her to turn around because he was going to uh, have an Aces and Eights escort her uh, back to the arena. So, you know, when you when you watch it close like these two do. You know, you yeah, know. And, and that, you know, I understand that. And that one I, I don't have as big a problem with because, you know, he could be saying to her in so many words, hey, make the driver pull it around and the bikes will bring you back in. That one doesn't bother me as much, but... Right, just little tiny holes. But again, I thought overall that uh, the wrestling that was put forward in the ring tonight, fantastic. Even a little bit of comedy spot where, uh, by the way, uh, it's National Kissing Day. <laughs> and he just went for it. I swore we were going to end up seeing uh, an extra shot of Arby's from our girl ODB today instead of Mickey James because they were rolling around like it was... It was, you know, it was party time. You know, EY doesn't see his wife that often, so it's it's go time anytime he sees her. I just thought they were going to roll all the way back up the ramp. Little disappointed when they just get, you know, a quarter of the way up and they they scurry off. You know, I thought we were going to get the full effort all the way up the ramp, but it was not to be, unfortunately. Well, and I thought so too. The way they purposely made sure they rolled out of the ring through the ropes, and uh, what we did see is how they take care of that ramp. Did you see the tape come up on the ramp? Absolutely. Terrible stuff. Terrible. So, uh, Matthew, I do want to talk about the show overall. Good wrestling. Uh, great wrestling in some matches. Uh, plus a, a good match out of uh, Bobby Roode and Austin Aries. But overall, the times when they were on the microphone, especially Brooke Hogan, who, to her credit, has done some good stuff on TV, has been usable on TV. Tonight, she looked like it was her first time in front of a camera, and she had no believability in that segment whatsoever. It was hard to watch. Oh, absolutely. Just not the right fit for her, having her come out there and try to command that segment. It was not believable. It was tough to get through, and I think they really need to look at how they're, they're going to use her going forward. Backstage segments, fine. You know, out there in the ring with the whole Bully Ray, Hulk Hogan thing, she's been used right thus far. But trying to have her come out there and command the, you know, be playing that authority figure role, and she's giggling, and it's just not, man, it just wasn't believable. So, again, Meat had a lot of good stuff coming out of that that I'm looking forward to. You know, maybe they'll dig up enough enough talent to get a tag division started again in that knockouts division. And, again, a ladder match between uh, Gail Kim and Terrence Terrell. I mean, the, the bar has been raised after that match at Slammiversary. People have been talking about that match, and I think there are some good things that can definitely come out Oh, that lot, that ladder match here in the next upcoming weeks. But again, that was buried. You know, I feel like the lead was buried in that segment because it, at no point did it was after the segment was over that it, it dawned on me. Okay, that was the big announcement because it's mentioned matter of factly, and then it's basically you know Brooks saying, "Ah, oh, well, that's all I have for you tonight. That's my knockout to dress," and we were finished with the segment. So there was no real pacing. There was no real buildup to that. It was just uh, just not done well at all. God, hard to watch. Very, very hard to watch. And again, you know, uh, we bring it up one more time. Couldn't they have brought up some of the uh, gut check right. participants? Some other women that are that belong in the you know knockout division. How many were in there? Four. Very. I very... get the selling of injury part too, but if this is a state of the knockouts address. Yeah, bring their hobbled ass in the ring. No, I mean, where was where was Tara? No Tara? Yeah, no Tara. You know, just very look thin. It looked like a very very thin roster, and it's not what you want to do when you're doing something like that. You want to meathead if you got to get people out of the crowd to make it look like you know they're filed way back there. Oh, this is a pretty impressive roster we've got. I've never seen her or her or her. You know, you don't have to know that they're just you know fans in section four and five there just to give that presentation that you've got, you know, depth there, and it, it looked very, very thin tonight. And, yeah, especially especially the time, too, when you're acknowledging that the tag belts exist, you know, and you're doing the math there in the ring, and you're try, trying to see what kind of tag division you could assemble, and it's just not there. Right, and not only the tag division, you need, you know, uh, I know there's such a thing as seat fillers at wrestling shows, Matthew, but uh, you need talent fillers as well. I mean, come on. And ODB was in that ring. She hasn't been used as a, a talent that performs in how long? Right, right. Absolutely. Uh, unbelievable. 
Unbelievable. So uh, TNA, you know, they had been good at hiding some of the, you know, the shortcomings that they have. They put their shortcomings out in front and showed them to us and left the camera on. It's honestly like if you had a, you know, a cameraman get knocked down. It's that sideways shot, you know what I mean, with the camera sitting like this. And then the commentators keep talking while you're like this. Or if, you know, somebody's not zoomed in and you're sitting like this, and this is how the rest of the show goes. You know, we could do a show like this for 30 minutes. It was just terrible. I thought it was basement value production from TNA, which, you know, has put on great entertainment. But, Matthew, not tonight. Yeah. And this, this period going forward now between now and Bound for Glory, a couple of things. You're going to have more reliance on the Bound for Glory series in general which is going to, you're going to really need the storylines they do have going, which right now it's looking like the main event mafia storyline and, you know, whatever else they, they conjure up here. But you're going to have, basically, the wrestling is going to be more focused on this tournament, more focused on this series, as opposed to storyline driven, like we've got in the last couple of years. You have more matches that aren't happening because a feud is developing or any storyline purposes but because they're Bound for Glory series matches. So what happens there is your few storylines that you're running with, you need to make sure that they're entertaining. You need to make sure they're sucking people in. And tonight, I feel like we got a preview with where we're going with the main event mafia and a couple other directions. And you just you really need to make sure that what you're doing storyline-wise is getting the, the viewer invested because there's going to be overall less storylines going on now because of the tournament style, because of the series that you're focusing on. Matches are going to happen on a weekly basis in, I hesitate to say, but more of a haphazardly way because it's not going to be you know one storyline flowing into the next on a week-to-week -week basis. Yeah, and you know, it's, I'm going to throw out to the, uh, the comments here, and I, I like to read comments on occasion from our uh, YouTube channel, um, and I apologize, Google, uh, Google Hangout uh, doesn't work on automatic switching right now, so it's meathead switching as well. Uh, I want to comment about the uh, comments that are happening here on the YouTube page. Um, uh, Serati5 says, errors in the bad influences keeping me from dropping TNA all together. He makes a great point. It's not just them that are, you know, that had people invested in it, but tonight, if it wasn't for the Bound for Glory series, if it wasn't for, you know, watching... Uh, you know, Austin Aries wrestling, watching Bobby Roode wrestle, and AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. If it wasn't for those things, God, coming in and seeing Brooke Hogan do what she did and TNA presenting it like that, I would have turned the channel too, especially with Game 7 on tonight. They put on, man, you got to put your best foot forward. And I thought they really just dropped the deuce. And I want to go back to how it began tonight too, something we talked about last week. We talked about them having to be careful doing this on a weekly basis put Hogan out again to open the show initially. And it seems like that is the go-to formula. And I understand if you're in an arena, Hogan coming out getting the pop. But to a TV audience each week, if you know it's going to be the same old hat, Hogan's going to come out there and essentially ramble on about something. It, it gets old real quick to the TV viewer. So again, something we saw happen again tonight that they've got to be careful with going forward. Yeah. Um, let's handle some uh, some company business. Well, not company business, but let's handle some PWR business. Folks, uh, in the greater Milwaukee area, I know that you enjoy Summerfest, and you know it's happening starting next week, Wednesday. But next week, Thursday, get all the information at PWRshow.com. PWR will be broadcasting live on My24. It's going to be happening down on the Summerfest grounds at uh, one of the many, many stages that we have down there. So your chance to come watch a broadcast of the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime TV, which will air on My24. Watch it live. It is broadcasting and taping live next week, Thursday, uh, starting at noon. So get in, bring in your donation, whatever way you get into the park next week, Thursday. Come on down and hang out with the Pro Wrestling Report. Uh, Damian Nelson, David here, will be broadcasting it live. I think they've got some shenanigans planned. You know, that's one of the things they like to do. They like to get out there, Matthew, and do those shenanigans. Uh, you going to try to make it up here for Summerfest, Matthew? Not going to be able to make it up this year, unfortunately. But uh, 
I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we can swing last minute, maybe. Okay. Well, uh, Jeremy Pivens do not apply. Uh, this is the real Summerfest, not the one that you were trying to promote three, four years ago. Uh, this is uh, Summerfest, and it is the world's largest music festival. Also, folks, don't forget that coming up this Monday, uh, we've got PWRs live. Which again, I think we should just rebrand it all to PWR Interactive because we try to interact with you over and over and over. Make sure you're hitting us up on Facebook as well, Facebook.com/slash PWR Show. And uh, Matthew, I hear uh, that Raw may be coming through your town. That is the uh, the word on the street. Uh, Matthew Thomas being in attendance for uh, Raw Live next Monday in uh, North Charleston, South Carolina. We will have a uh, wait. Is it North Charleston or South Charleston, North Carolina? It's uh, I get confused sometimes too. So at least I think they're coming to my city. I could be I could be <laughs> wrong. So uh, we will have a, a troop on the ground next uh, this coming up Monday, uh, as I will be in attendance at a Raw Live this Monday. So really looking forward to getting down there. And uh, it's been it's been a while since I've been to a Raw meathead. So uh, looking forward to getting back uh, getting back there live on Monday night. Well, I know that uh, you know our fans like to point out when they see Damian Nelson and David Hero uh, sitting on TV, you know, either being in card camera side. I suggest you try to look for Matthew Thomas. Matter of fact, uh, you know, tweet us at PWR Show and tell us what Matthew's wearing. Take pictures of your TV and say, "I think I found Matthew Thomas." It's like a "Where's a Waldo?" you know, campaign or "Where in the world is Sam and uh, our Carmen San Diego?" I think it's time to find Matthew Thomas. Oh, absolutely, and uh, we can also because we are interactive here, Meathead. Maybe make another interactive element and let the fans decide what color feather boa they want me to sport come Monday night. Right. Well, I mean, that's not something that you normally would wear outside because I know that you do those kind of things in your house. But if you're wearing your boas outside, that's fine too, Matthew. All right, folks, if you want to interact with us here on the program, don't forget to head on over to pwrshow.com. Click on Be a Guest. Make sure you have a webcam and a Google Plus account, and we can put you on the show tonight uh, just like you know we've done with other great guests we've had. Again, you want to be on the program, you want to interact with us, you want to sit in the you know the chat room and you want to sit you know uh, texting and commenting and saying how nobody wants to have you on, be my guest. We don't suppress the truth. Come on, we'll have you talk. We just ask that you you know talk with uh, an intelligible voice and you know uh, keep the profanity to a side because you know I swear enough for all of us apparently, Matthew. Absolutely. So, folks, that's the wrap up. Uh, again, a fail for me, Matthew. I assume a fail for you as well for Impact tonight. I have a real hard time passing this. Just uh, there were some bright spots there, but when you look at you know the bookmarks, the beginning, the middle, the end, your big take-home spots, they all fell flat for me tonight. Yeah, so uh, a fail for me as well. We'll see you Monday night for PWR Live for Matthew Thomas. I'm the man they call me dead. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. <laughs>